In today's video, we will be looking at the finite element analysis of a stepped bar subjected to axial tension. The topics are as follows. Um, first is the problem definition. Then we will look at the conventional methods to solve the problem using the strength of material approach. Then we will look at the FIA um, method applied to the problem. And finally, we will look at the ANSYS static structural analysis and compare the results. The problem definition is as follows. The, the, composite, uh, the composite step bar of the, the different cross sections is subject to an axial tension of 80 kilonewtons. And the other side acts as a fixed support. Geometry details and material data are given. The objective is to find the deformation strain and stress of each individual bar now we will look at the strength of the material approach in which each bar is treated individually under equilibrium conditions and find out the deformation using formula as shown the total deformation is the addition of the individual deformations of the bar to find the force reaction apply to force balance and to calculate the strain we will use the definition of strain as a change in lengths relative to the original lengths. And then the stress is calculated using Hooke's law as shown. Now we will look at the FIA method. Uh, in the FEA method, the differential equation is solved using the weighted residual or weak form method and using appropriate shape function and boundary conditions. Then the general elemental matrix can be obtained as shown. Then we decide the number of elements according to geometry. In this case, we select two elements uh, as shown and identify boundary conditions for the problem. Since the node one is the fixed support, there will be an internal reaction on the node and therefore the deformation is zero into U1 is zero. Um, similarly, at node 2, there is no external force acting, therefore F2 is 0 and U2 is unknown. At node 3, the force is given as F3 and the unknown is U3. And we write the elemental matrix for individual elements as shown. Note, don't add boundary conditions to the elemental matrix. After the elemental matrix, we will assemble the global matrix and combine elements one and two, and then we will apply the boundary condition. This gives the set of equations that we can solve simultaneously. A solve equation to find out the unknowns in this U2 and U3. And then the reaction force is calculated using equation one after finding U2 and U3. And from deformation, we will find the strain and stress on each element. Uh, note that U3 is the total deformation. To find out the deformation of element 2, subtract U2 from U3 and calculate stress and strain. Now we go to the ANSYS workbench for the analysis. The static structural is used by dragging and dropping it from the toolbox to the project to define the material go to engineering data where we can create our own material. In this case, we will use structural steel and modify the data as per the problem. Edit the Young's modulus as per the problem and the Sans ratio as default. Now go to geometry, right click and open design modeler. Uh, to create the geometry as per the problem, there are several ways. This video will show two ways to create the geometry. Note, change the unit as per your choice. The first is using the primitive option, which creates predefined shapes. We'll select cylinder to create the first element and change operation to add frozen and give dimension as shown and offset as zero for all directions. For the second element, create a cylinder with an offset as shown and dimensions as mentioned. Note the change in operation to add frozen. Uh, 
This will create two individual components as we required, but if we select the add material operation, that will create one solid part. The second method is using extrude command. Select the XY plane. Create the circle with a diameter of 50 millimeters. Perform extrude operation, select the sketch and operation, which as add frozen, give extrude depth as per problem. Click on generate. Okay. So for the second element, select the face of the first element and create the plane. Create the circle on the selected face and give dimension. Form the extrude operation as shown and change the extrude depth to 100 millimeters. Click on generate. Using any of the methods results in two solid components. Select bath, right click, select form new part, check the shared topology and, and change to automatic. Click generate and close the design modeler. The third method is using revolve command. Go the required plane and create two rectangles as per the dimensions. and then go create revolve, choose the axis, add frozen. And we're to form the new part from solid object, click generate and close the design modeler. Now go to mesh and double click to open ANSYS mechanical. Uh, coded geometry and check the material assignment for both the body. And now click on mesh to create the mesh. And the default mesh looks very coarse. So we apply body sizing to both bodies. Go to the static structural, then right click and add fixed support as shown. Uh, again, go to the static structural, select the force, choose the component, apply the force in the positive Z direction. and then click on solve. Go to the solution tab, right click insert deformation, select total deformation and select both bodies and apply. Uh, 
Uh, similarly, uh, add total deformation at the interface of two bodies. To obtain stress and strain for each element, insert strain, select normal strain, select body, and edit orientation to the Z direction. Um, similar steps are repeated for element two and for stress as well. Um, click on solution to evaluate all results for total deformation, note down the maximum value and for deformation at the interface, take the average value for stress and strain on each element, take the average value, but you can notice the maximum is very high compared to the average. This is due to stress concentration which is not accounted for in the theoretical calculation, but remember in actual design, the stress concentration is a very important parameter. Uh, the scale is used to visualize the result. Remember to set ter scale means one X, which shows actual result. Um, for finding the force reaction and support, Go to solution insert and choose probe and force reaction and boundary condition. Choose fixed support and then click on evaluated result. Since the applied force is in positive Z direction, the reaction will be in negative Z direction with same magnitude. Uh, now we will look at another method to solve the same problem using the line element or one dimensional. First, drag and drop static structural elements into the project, go to engineering data and modify the properties uh, as per the problem. Now go to geometry, right click and open design modeler, change unit. Uh, uh, on the XY plane, create a line of length 200 millimeters for the first bar. Select the XY plane, create a new sketch, and add a line of length 100 millimeters for the second bar. Uh, now go to concept, select line from sketches, and select the sketch for the first bar. Keep the same step for the second bar. Um, remember to change the operation to add frozen. Um, after this, we need to create the cross section. And for that, go to concept, select cross section and add circular and give a radius of 25 millimeters for the first bar. And similarly create another cross section of 12.5 millimeters for the second bar. Select the line body and apply the cross section. Uh, 
after applying, select both bodies and form a new part. Check that the shared topology is set to edge joint. Click on generate. Um, now go to ANSYS Mechanical by double clicking the model option. Go to geometry and check the material assignment for the line body. Click on mesh and generate the mesh. We will apply body sizing to the line element. To apply boundary conditions, go to static structural, right click add fixed support, select the point and apply. Similarly, add force to the point and select component. Uh, adding 80 kilo newton in the positive x direction. Select solution, right click solve. To find deformation, go to solution, insert, add total deformation, and select both um, line elements. So to find the deformation of the first bar, we'll select the point of intersection. Note the maximum value. By default, stress and strain will not be available for line element. And to enable it, go to solution and in post-processing, set the beam section result to yes. Now click on solve. Add normal strain in the X direction for both line elements. Similarly, add normal stress in the X direction for both line elements. For finding force reactions, go to probe, uh, select force reactions, and choose fixed support. The result is tabulated as shown, and error is calculated using the exact value as a strength of material approach. The error is within the limit and can be further improved by adding a greater number of elements or reducing the body size. Did you think about this during ANSYS simulation in 3D body? The maximum stress is significantly greater than the average stress. What could be the reason? Is it practically possible to reduce the maximum stress? And if possible, what methods can be used? Following are the references for further reading. That's all for today's video. If you have any doubt or suggestion, please do not forget to comment. Thank you.